Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. And this is a new week and this is the last few days uh, to the end of the month of July. Now we're in the second half of the year and it's important you listen attentively to the things God have to say to you. I've always told you this, pay attention to God's word. If God is going to communicate anything to you, he will speak. And when you pay attention, you will learn a lot from the Lord. So when, when, when I'm bringing forth the word of the Lord, because that's how he shows his love to you, he gives you his word. And if you can keep his word, then you are reciprocating that love that he has shown you. Before going to today's broadcast, can we make demand for our daily bread? Are you ready? Say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Believe it as you have declared it. Listen, we live from above. We live from above. We don't live from here. As a child of God, your source is not here. Now we say these things and sometimes people go, mm, it's just the talking. No, it's not the talking. That's the reality. We live from above. The challenges, most people have not tested it yet. And, and they've not tested it because they don't believe. The amount of unbelief that we have, you'll be shocked. That among the people that go to church, very few of them believe in Jesus in truth. It's not to stand up and say, I believe in Jesus Christ. No, it shows in your works. It shows in the way you reason. It shows in your decision making. Yes, it's not to say, I believe in Jesus that he can do miracle for me. No, it's beyond that. Believing in Jesus Christ is far beyond expecting a miracle from him. Now, now miracles are, are normal with him. See? Now, some people will tell you miracles are some special. We don't live by brothers and sisters. We live by miracles. We live by miracles. I mean, how, how would you even think of it? You are a child of God. And how would you dare think that miracles are only when um, things fail, then maybe when, when, when doctors fail, when, when, when your finances fail, that's when you now need a miracle. No. The, the, the fact that you believe in God in itself, it's a miracle. Because how do you believe in something you don't see? And so your constant faith in him you need some confirmations. Don't you get it? You need some confirmations that you, you are in relationship with one who you don't see. It's like when an airplane pilot takes off and then he goes into the sky. He needs to depend on his instruments. Now, many people don't know that the taking off of the plane and landing, it's a miracle. Now, when I say, when I say this is a miracle, I'm not speaking of divine intervention. You know, I'm using this to describe what believing in a miracle is. Now, the, the pilot takes off and it goes right into the sky. Now, before he takes off, he's already submitted his flight plan. So he's plotted his flight plan. How many, um, how many, um, the, the height he would go how many feet he's going to fly and, and, and all that. He's, he's submitted it. He's gotten his approval. Then he goes up. Now you can see when you're leaving the ground and then you go right into the clouds and get up to 37,000 feet. And at that point, it, it's like the whole world is before you. You can turn in any direction. But how do you now move? To the right destination. You've got to trust in those instruments. Are you understanding what I'm saying? You've got to trust in those instruments. And then maybe communicating with a tower nearby. They, they are the ones to tell you, oh, 
um, uh, you seem to be heading in the wrong direction. Paraventure, there's something wrong with your instrument. You will need some guidance. Now, trusting in the guidance of that power, you've got to believe them. Now, in believing them, please understand what I'm sharing with you. In believing and trusting in them, you expect that to see certain manifestations to tell you in the right direction. If you've flown to a, a spe specific city before, you already know when you begin to approach that city, you already know the things you will see first. See? So you're now, now you are trusting an instrument. And then as you're going, trusting those instruments, physically there are things you will see that will make you, ah, oh, all right, yeah, okay, 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 okay. You understand what I'm saying? So that's exactly how we walk with God. You don't just say, I believe, I believe, I believe God is taking me, God is taking me, God is taking me. No! You've got to see some manifestations and, and those manifestations don't happen once a year. They don't happen once a month. There are manifestations that happen around as often as possible to show that you are believing in God. So that's why I say our life is a miracle. We should expect miracles every day. Not only in your finances. By instructions. The instructions you receive. I mean, you want to do something. Suddenly you hear a voice tell you, don't go that way, go this way. That's a miracle. Because he just saved you from danger or he just caused you to enter into a place of favor. It's a miracle. Miracle is not just, oh, I received money. Oh, I was sick and I got healed. No. But it's a listing as a child of God. You must be living a miraculous life. Everybody who knows you should be wowed at you. Yes. I mean, we, we can be here discussing something and then the next thing you, everybody's stuck. We don't know what to do. And then the next thing you step out and, and, and then come back and say, I think I, I think I know the answer. Like, really? What, what's the answer? And then you tell them, you explain it. Like, how did you get that? That's a miracle. <laughs> it's good. Yes, that's a miracle. Well, we say as a child of God, it is wrong for you to be stranded. You should never be stranded. Now, it doesn't mean opportunities will not come to look like you're going to be stranded. But when those things happen, this is how you prove, prove that you are walking with God. This is how you prove that God is with you. He said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Now, it, 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 no, you know, it has happened several times, you know, my wife and I, not just my wife and I, several people. I can be driving to a place I've never been to before. And, and sometimes even the maps fail. You've, you've seen those situations when the maps fail. I remember one time I was driving with some people in the car. No, we're just looking for a place. Now the map ended, like the map, like this is the end of the street. But then we could, physically, we could see houses down the road. You understand what I'm saying? But the map is telling us that there's no more road there. Now it happens because the map has not been updated. And I said, well, map has failed, so let, let's move by the Spirit. And then we drove and drove, and then I went. Now, there was no number on the, on the house. I drove straight to the house. Because the person had sent me the picture of the house. So I drove straight to the house. And I just stopped because I heard in my spirit, stop. So I stopped like, so where do we go to now? Then I turned around and I looked and like, oh, let me see that picture again. I said, this is the house. Look at this picture. This is the house. And that's a miracle. Now someone else will say, eh. you see, you know, when, because you don't know the source of your life. See, because you don't know the source of your life. If... If you buy gas or, or uh, over here we call it petrol in a specific filling station that you trust, okay? You trust their pump, you trust their pricing, you trust the quality of their product. Now, if you tell someone to go there, do you know you'll be expecting a miracle that they don't fail you? <laughs> So the person goes and comes and says, wow, excellent service. I mean, do you know I noticed something? By the time I, I, I turn on my engine, 
the fuel, ah, the other place I used to buy, they, I think they've been cheating me because I bought the same amount of, of fuel, but I noticed the, the volume was more. He said, yeah. More like they have just proven again that they are still game. Now that's how we walk with the Lord. Understand what I'm sharing with you. You don't walk with God without thinking miracles. You don't walk with God. You know, don't let people demonize miracles. You know, say eh, eh, it, it shows you didn't do what you're No, brothers and sisters, look at the life of Jesus. He was with Peter, tax collectors came. So would you accuse Jesus that he should have known that tax collectors should go? He should have carried money. That's why it's always good to have money. No. No. But what did he do? Okay, tax collectors are here. They want to collect money. They were not even supposed to pay the tax. Jesus asked Peter. Peter said, no, we're not supposed to pay. He said, you know what? Let's not offend them. Okay, let's not offend them. What should we do? As easy and as simple as that was. He said, take your hook. Go to the river. Now, I believe that the, they were not too far from the river. I believe so. I don't think Jesus would tell him to go 10 kilometers to go and get the fish. I don't think so. Because remember... The tax collectors were waiting. So I believe they were not too far from the sea. So Peter took his hook, went, got, you know, you know, you see, you see, when we believe God, you must know who you believe. It would have been so easy and simple for Jesus to have told Peter, Go drop your hook, you'll catch a big fish. When you catch that fish, go to the market and sell it. The money you'll sell it will be enough to pay for our tax. See? Miraculously, he would have caught a big fish. Miraculously, he would have gotten someone that will offer the price, the right price. That would have all been miracles. But look at what Jesus said. He said, the first fish you catch, open the mouth. And when you open the mouth, he didn't say, Remove something inside and go. So say you will find co coins. There you find a coin there, and that coin you will find in the mouth of the fish will be enough to pay pay for tax for both of us. So the fish had to carry the right amount of coin. You know what I mean? Maybe you had one pen, one 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 pen, one or one whatever we call it here, kobo. Maybe one kobo or how do we even define those things? It's been long we spent that kind of money. Praise God. I mean, I'm talking about coins now. Maybe one cent, maybe five cents. I think five cents should be a coin. You know, but, but whatever it was, it had to be the right one that would pay for their tax. And that's a miracle. So, so imagine being like Jesus. Something happens. And then you're like, oh, there's nothing I can do. You know, be careful how you say there's nothing I can do. Because there's always something. You can do. Do you want me to kill myself? No, you don't have to kill yourself. There is something you can do. Now, these are the benefits we get in following Jesus. These are the benefits. Don't let anybody deceive you. The Jesus we believe in is a constant where miracle is concerned. The God that we serve is he, he, you know, the miracle is divine intervention into natural affairs. But then the God we serve, he loves that intervention. He loves it like nothing, man. He loves it. <laughs> he fed a whole nation, nation miraculously for 40 years. Do you know what that means? And he never got tired. Now, funny enough, the plan was not 40 years. The plan was 40 days because the journey was 40 days. But hey, guess what? 40 years. And where that food was coming from did not run dry. Imagine, imagine planning a trip. Think about it. Planning a trip. Oh, Balika Bonda Freddy. You know, you, you, you're traveling and this trip, you're going for one, one wonderful holiday and you've planned with your family. We're going to just spend, you know, 40 days on this journey. So you, you know, you're going to lodge in a hotel. You know you're going to, and then you've calculated how much that's going to be. So you know all these things, and you've prepared very well for it. And maybe, you, of course, you carry extra. But imagine going on that trip, and then you have to spend 40 years there without planning for it. I mean, without planning for it. 
<laughs> Think about how much change, how all the things you will have to go through. But God set out with these children of Israel and they went 40 years and there was no day God complained and said, the manna will soon finish you. You guys, you better enter. You better behave so that you enter. the Look, we have in the reserve, we have just 10 days more. So you guys, behave well so that I can direct you on how to enter the promised land. No. Heaven never ran dry. I know the next thing to observe. You remember when they got to the Red Sea, they didn't have to go anywhere to bring the miracle. Right there, the miracle they needed was with Moses. God says, stretch out, stretch out your hands and divide the waters. He stretched his hands and the waters divided. And then they walked through on dry ground. Now, after the Red Sea, they got to another challenging point. The water was bitter. Oh, God, the water is bitter. Hey, God didn't say, okay, I'm sending someone to come to you. No. God said, see that tree beside the, 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 the water? Say, yes. Cut a branch and throw inside the water. See? <laughs> Praise God. Cut the branch and he threw it. The water became sweet. Wonderful. Wonderful. That's a miracle. Oh, they got to it. Oh, we need to drink water. We need to drink water. And God said, okay, Moses, see that rock over there? Strike the rock and water will come out. Moses struck the rock and water came out. Okay, now we're hungry. We need food. He said, no, not a problem. By tomorrow morning, you'll eat food. Mm, okay, let's see what's going to happen. We're in the wilderness. And the next morning, food showed up. They went, they gathered, they ate. And that continued and continued. And one day they thought to themselves, like, oh, this where, where this man has been you know, for so long. We want to eat meat. And Moses got upset. But God said, Moses, I'll give them meat. And they'll eat enough meat until it comes out from their nostrils. And Moses was wondering, where are you going to get meat? Do you know how many we are? And God said, Moses, do you know who I am? <laughs> it's God. And right there, they didn't have to go hunting. They didn't have to go, go, go to war against any nation so that they can get the spoils of the, the cattle and stuff. No. Right there, the Bible said God caused an east wind to blow from the sea. And quails, he blew quails from the sea. And the quails came and, and heaped <laughs> around them. Enough, more than enough. Yet the quails in the earth did not finish. Brothers and sisters, you must, you see, respect this God we talk about. Respect him. He's more than enough. And I pray that's exactly how he will be more than enough for you. Praise God. Whatever you are believing him for. He's more than enough. He's more than, don't let people make you walk in unbelief. He's more than enough. Whatever you desire, whatever you want, he's more than enough. Don't limit yourself by the, 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 the you know, sometimes you say, oh, um, I, I can't even think of buying a house. I can't even think of building a house. How much am I paid? You see, you can build a house despite how much you are paid. You're working, yes, you're, you're, you're busy somewhere, which is good, but your life should not be dependent on what you do in terms of work. Please understand this. Some people say, eh, so that means you're encouraging people to go and steal. I didn't say steal. You don't have to steal. Why must stealing be an option? You have a father and you've got inheritance. That's what I'm telling you. Praise God. We draw from your inheritance. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Our time is up. Praise God. Listen, make up your mind today. I will not be limited by my earnings. I will not be limited by my enemies. Why? I've got a God who is big and is more than enough. Receive that as a blessing today and expand in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.